Have you got a Royal Caribbean cruise book? That's great, but there are some weird things that nobody tells you, but I'm gonna tell you all about them up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. I've been lucky enough to go on Royal Caribbean cruises for many years, but there are definitely a few odd things about cruising that someone new to cruising might not expect. Going on a cruise is a fun family vacation, but there are definitely some nuances and experiences that just don't exist in everyday life. And these are not problems or bad things by any means. Rather, just think of this as a heads up to anybody going on their first cruise with what to expect as it relates to what I'm gonna call cruising culture. I've come up with my list of the most interesting differences first time cruisers might not know about. First up is a lot of people wear matching t-shirts on a cruise. A relatively new phenomenon, in my experience anyway, is people buying matching t-shirts to wear on the ship. While group t-shirts are not a new idea, there's been a surge in nautical-inspired cruise pun shirts to help kick off family vacations. On embarkation day especially, you can spot plenty of groups walking around in matching colored shirts that have the phrase like, get naughty or get ship face, or my favorite, yeah boy. In addition, family reunions, birthdays, bachelorette parties, and other special occasions see lots of matching t-shirts. Some even take the next step and customize the shirt with names or nicknames of the person wearing it. You certainly will not be out of place without one, but perhaps it would be something your family would want to do to help show everybody how excited they are for the cruise. The next weird thing you might not know that happens on a cruise is there's a lot of people that cruise almost all the time. I used to think going on a cruise once or twice a year was a really big deal until I started talking to other cruisers. There is a large contingency of cruisers who cruise a lot. By a lot, I'm talking monthly, weekly, or even more often. In fact, one cruiser named Super Mario actually basically lives on board a Royal Caribbean ship at any given time. As someone that started cruising once a year and now is close to cruising maybe once a month, at least before the shutdown, I can say with certainty the idea of cruising a lot does not surprise me anymore, but if you're new to it, expect many others to be regulars on board. Speaking of regular cruisers, a lot of Crown and Anchor ranks are literal badges of honor. Royal Caribbean has its own customer loyalty program known as the Crown and Anchor Society, and the cruisers towards the top of the program take it very seriously. The cruise line rewards members who cruise the most, with special perks, and those rewards really mean a lot to its members. In fact, there are people that reach the very top status known as the Pinnacle Club who will walk around the ship wearing their pin that has their name engraved on it. Another weird thing you might not expect to see on a cruise is the weather forecasts in the summer are pretty much useless. If you have a Caribbean cruise booked in the summer months, as you get within a couple of days of your sailing, you're gonna probably wanna check the weather and the weather forecast likely will show rain every day. During the warmer months in the tropics, it may rain every day, but usually for short periods and it's gone before you know it. Just because rain is in the forecast doesn't actually mean your day in port or on board is gonna be totally washed out. In fact, the forecast may call for rain and it may never actually rain at all where you're located. You can certainly plan for the possibility of rain on your cruise, but don't take the forecast precipitation as a guarantee of getting soaked all day long. Another thing that's kind of weird about going on a cruise these days is dining on a cruise ship is an adventure. It is likely safe to say that first time cruisers know there are different dining venues on a cruise ship, but Royal Caribbean's food game has been elevated to a point that it rivals most downtown dining districts now. Royal Caribbean ships are packed with complimentary and specialty restaurant choices, each with different cuisines and cooking styles. Eating on board is more than just more of the same, and you'll often have a good variety of choices. In addition, Royal Caribbean has been actively upgrading its culinary offerings to keep it in line with really any land-based resort. In short, before your cruise, look up the restaurants available on the ship that you booked, and then learn more about dining on a Royal Caribbean ships. So that way you're prepared for your, all the choices that are gonna be there. Something else, speaking of booking, you might wanna do is pre-book as much as you can. While you certainly can book a cruise and then show up on embarkation port with no research or planning and probably have a great time, your best bet is to plan as much as you can in advance. Royal Caribbean has made learning about and booking activities, dining, excursions, and special events incredibly easy thanks to its free app and the Royal Caribbean Cruise Planner website. All you have to do is just log in, browse around to get an idea of what to expect. The more you learn, the better off your vacation experience will be, and arguably more importantly, the more money you will save. Something else that's kind of weird about going on a cruise is basically the entire muster drill. Now, the good news is a lot of this has changed in 2021. So good news is that it's not like it used to be, but there's really not a lot like the muster drill on land. And this is the safety demonstration that you would uh, have to undergo on any cruise. This is somewhat similar to the safety demonstration you would hear on an airplane before takeoff, but the muster drill is a required drill on the first day of the cruise that everybody has to do. Now, the good news is you can do this now through the Royal Caribbean app and you don't have to stop what you're doing and literally report to your muster station. 
back in the day, you'd have to go stand around and listen to the safety briefing. Now you can do it from the comfort of a, a bar, your stateroom, anywhere on the ship. Watch the video. Make sure you sign off on everything that's good there. And then just go to your muster station so you know where it is. All they'll do is check off that you know where it is, and you're good to go. It's actually really easy to do. But the muster drill is just something, again, that doesn't really exist. When you go to a hotel or a resort or your parents' house, nobody tells you where all the emergency exits are. It makes everybody stop what they're doing in order to undergo a safety drill. It's just something about cruising that makes it different. Something else a little bit strange that I've talked about in other videos is the hiding of ducks on a cruise ship. Social media has spawned a new cruising tradition where some guests hide rubber ducks around the ship for other guests to find. This is known colloquially as cruising ducks, but this practice is about if you find a duck, you take a photo of where you found it and then post it on a Facebook. Then you either hide the duck for someone else to find or take it home as a souvenir. So if you spot a rubber duck in a bush or behind a desk, it's likely the work of some other cruise fans and not a child who's misplaced their toy. Something you would never see in a hotel but happens all the time on a cruise ship is door decoration. Similar to the matching t-shirt idea we talked about a little bit earlier in this video, stateroom door decorations are about getting guests sharing their excitement and joy of a cruise vacation with everybody else. Door decorations can consist of name tags, lights, paper creations, and pretty much anything else that can be attached to a door via magnets. Basically, it's a fun way to share who is cruising and why, and your family can get in on the fun too. If you bring the proper materials, just be sure not to bring any adhesives like tape or glue. Magnets will make sure that anything you got there will stick to the door and not damage it when you want to take it down. And something else that's kind of definitely weird, but kind of a fun activity as well, something called the quest. And it's hard to describe the quest properly, but the best thing I can say is that it's an adult scavenger hunt that's usually held towards the end of Royal Caribbean Cruises, and it's hosted by the cruise director. The quest sounds like a fun romp among guests to complete a series of challenges in a short period of time. Sounds pretty tame, right? Like, what's so cool about that, Matt? Well, teams of guests compete with certain items as well as perform certain actions, and what tends to happen is the challenges become more and more adult in nature, and fun mayhem ensues. It's one of those things you just have to see it to fully understand it, but the quest is unlike anything else you're ever going to find on any other kind of vacation. And there you have it, 10 weird things that about Royal Caribbean Cruises that no one really tells you about, but it, they definitely happen on board. Let me know in the comments, which of these do you, have you agree with? Are they weird? And did I miss any of the weird things you can possibly do on a cruise? There's a lot of them. There's just sometimes it's just cruise life, right? Anyway, if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button. It really does help us with the YouTube algorithm, so that way we uh, get this video out to more people. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and turn that little bell icon on, so that way you get notified when we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.